They are watching you. Ever feel that prickle across your neck, that ominous sensation of eyes on you, but you can't detect anyone around? Well, although they can't spot the culprit directly, your senses might be onto something. The earth is surrounded by eyes, studying you, tracking you, trying to understand every aspect of your day-to-day -day life. They are our own satellites, and there are hundreds of them, and I don't think we quite realize how good they've gotten. There are satellites with mirrors the size of Hubble's, not pointed at distant galaxies to unravel their mysteries, but staring down at you. There are satellites that can see through clouds and don't care if it's day or night. They see just as clearly, either way. In this age of information, where companies are pushing for more and more data and governments strive to keep track of criminals and threats, the thing that might be harder and harder to find is privacy. Are the benefits worth the cost? In 1957, the number of artificial satellites in space first ticked up from zero to one. Sputnik was launched by the Soviet Union, officially to practice their satellite deployment methods and to send test radio signals through the atmosphere, but also to show the world that they were winning the space race. The world, however, did not take long to catch up. In 2007, 50 years later, there were 912 active satellites orbiting the Earth. As a testament to how quickly the industry is growing, it took only 10 years for that number to reach 1,778. In 2022, the number hit 6,905, and this number is set to grow. The company SpaceX alone wants to eventually raise their number of active Starlink satellites to a whopping 42,000. In the next 10 years, there could be hundreds of thousands of satellites from various different countries and private organizations orbiting our planet. Of course, not all of these satellites are there for observation. Around half of the ones active right now are communication satellites. But still, according to data collected by the UCS, the aptly named Union of Concerned Scientists, at the start of 2022, there were 1,052 eyes looking down on us. That's a lot of eyes. And they're getting sharper. Let's discuss spatial resolution. This is a measurement of how many meters on the ground are represented by a single pixel in a satellite-taken image. The early cameras on satellites like Landsat had a resolution of 80 meters, which is to say a single pixel represented an 8 x team square, meaning you could almost fit an entire football pitch in it. This made them good for taking sweeping images of our planet at large, and perhaps for keeping track of massive objects like clouds and weather fronts. But there was hardly the sense that our privacy was at risk. Now, well, see for yourself. These full-color videos were taken by a Carbonite, a commercially available satellite that captures an entire 5 kilometers swath as it passes by at 500 kilometers in low Earth orbit. The resolution for this video is one meter, which is good enough that you can pick out details like the motion of waves on the sea or cars driving along the road in real time, although you might not be able to distinguish their make and most likely not their drivers. The advantages of such a video are obvious. Transport officials can keep an eye on traffic congestion and it becomes easy to track the spread of urbanization. There are also numerous scientific benefits which we'll get into later, but there's one undeniable feature of such improved resolution that has made it very interesting for governments around the world. And the main reason you might be worried, it becomes easier for spy satellites to keep track of you. Spy satellites have also come a long way. Originally, when the CIA began their secretive corona project, disguised as an innocent space exploration program called Discoverer, Satellite cameras were recording their images onto actual film, which then had to be jettisoned and parachuted back down to Earth, where the capsule carrying the sensitive data could later be recovered. One of these capsules was actually the first ever man-made object to be recovered from space. It wasn't the most efficient system, and spy satellites tended not to last longer than a year before they ran out of film and capsules. Now, everything is digital, significantly improving the lifespan of such satellites. As for what they can see, 
Well, for obvious reasons, governments tend not to reveal how good the resolution is on their spy satellites. However, it's interesting to note that the video I showed you earlier of the one meter resolution satellite camera is not the best the market has to offer. Other satellites boast 50 centimeters and even 25 centimeters resolutions, and some such as Umbra's SAR satellite claim to have reached 16 centimeters. And this is about as good as they are legally allowed to get. The United States has laws in place that make it illegal to have satellites with better resolutions than that. Although, companies are pushing for this restriction to be lowered, so that they can keep up with a competitive global market that doesn't always have such restrictions. Take a note of that, though, this is not about capability. True, the laws of physics put some constraints on us that make better resolutions difficult to impossible without having a satellite fly close enough to the planet that atmospheric drag will start to cause it to fall. Or without making a light-gathering mirror so large that it becomes difficult to launch them on a rocket. However, it's not accurate to say that spy satellites can't get better resolution. There are rumors of resolutions hitting at least 10 centimeters resolution, perhaps even one centimeter. This image is not a satellite image, but was taken by a plane flying over the town of Zurich. However, it does reveal what a better than 10 centimeters resolution image can show. We are no longer on the resolution of making out cars. Here, you can see the branches on trees and even the color of clothes on people. You can see a lot of detail. Can you imagine what a one centimeter image might be like? This represents technology that exists today. In fact, better technology is now out there. The satellite that took this is a keyhole spy satellite. So there are potentially 11 additional Hubbles out there. Imagine how much further we would be if they were used for science instead of spying. Because they're not reliant on natural light, but are sending their own pulses, these types of satellites can work during the night as well as the day. So, with all of this, you likely are starting to feel a little worried for your privacy. It's unsettling to think that any time you step out of the house, eyes could be on you. Watching you walk or drive to your destination, seeing who you meet, where you go. They're probably not able to read your phone screen, but that's not far off. The cost to privacy feels huge, but even where there are no cameras, you aren't safe. However, it should be pointed out that satellites with decent resolution, although probably not at the 10 centimeters mark, can be extremely beneficial for studying our planet. Or, we can better understand hurricanes, atmospheric dust clouds, and other disasters. But it's scary to think that once the technology is there, if ever the government in possession of it decides to use it for more invasive goals, there's not much that can be done to stop them. At the end of the day, perhaps this is something inevitable that we all will simply have to get used to. Thanks for watching. All the best, and see you next time.